Welcome to this new Jakarta EE quick start guide. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can deploy a Jakarta EE application to a local Kubernetes cluster. First, we have to install a local Kubernetes cluster with a single node on our machine. If you are using Linux, you can use this micro Kubernetes. It's uh, quite easy to install. Uh, I will put the link to it in the description. If you're developing on Mac or Windows, you can use the one of the latest versions of Docker for Windows and Mac, where you can also enable a local Kubernetes cluster with a single node with just the mouse click. So to make sure our Kubernetes cluster is up and running, we can first make sure kubectl cluster info returns uh, the IP address of our master. Here it's a local host. And furthermore, we can check how many nodes are in our cluster right now. So in this example, as it's a, a local one, it's just my machine here, which is in this, this cluster. But to demonstrate how you can deploy Jakarta EE application, it's, it's enough. So now let's have a look at the application I'm, gonna, I'm going to deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's a, a bare Jakarta EE application with MicroProfile 3.2. So nothing special here. Um, I'm deploying the application to a Open Liberty server with all features for Java EE and MicroProfile enabled. And the application you might already know from my previous videos, it's a simple Jakarta EE8 application with, with one JuxRS endpoint, uh, which returns a string message, which gets injected via MicroProfile config. And it's just this hello world message here. Furthermore, the application is deployed to the root context of the application server using this um, IBM web extension file here. So we can later on our Kubernetes deployment uh, refer to the root context. That's everything for the application. So it's uh, rather simple. To know deploy to a Kubernetes cluster, we first uh, need a Docker image from our application. For this, I will use the official Open Liberty images and just pull in our config and the wall file at the end. Now comes the interesting part, uh, the deployment YAML, which is uh, required to deploy something to Kubernetes. First, we have to specify our deployment. Within deployment, um, we tell the Kubernetes cluster how to uh, create our application. So here we specify we want two pods running at the same time, also a replica set of two. And within the spec here, we specify which application to run. So within here, I'm giving it the name Jakarta EE app. For the image, um, I'm choosing a local container registry. So we will, once our, we create our Docker image, we will push it to this local container registry and the Kubernetes cluster can then use this container registry to pull the image from it. And this is the image name. Another important thing is we have to specify which ports we're going to use as we are running on Open Liberty. We can use the default Open Liberty port. And the next two parts are also important. So the first one is the readiness probe. So here we can tell Kubernetes to check an endpoint um, and to specify whether the application is um, ready to reserve traffic. And as we enabled all MicroProfile features here, we can make use of MicroProfile Health and just specify the default uh, readiness path, which runs on the same port. And we can give it a initial delay seconds to give Open Liberty some seconds to, to boot. Next, Kubernetes allows us to specify also a liveness probe. So Kubernetes will regularly check if the application is still live. And also here we can use MicroProfile Health check and use the dedicated liveness endpoint to check whether the application is still able to receive traffic once it's up and running. That's everything for the deployment where we will specify how many pods to run and where to get the container uh, the, con the image for our containers. Next, to make it accessible from outside, we have to create a so-called service in this example, as we are just using a local Kubernetes cluster, it's enough to use the type node port. So we'll just expose one port of our single node uh, Kubernetes cluster. And here I'm specifying that I will use the port 
31,000 and this will redirect or will internally um, target the port 9080, which is the is default open liberty port. So this will then route the traffic from localhost 31,000 to our open liberty application. That's everything for the well, most simplest uh, way to deploy this application to um, Kubernetes. Let's now do this. Within the readme, I've specified all required steps to, to do this on your machine. So first one is to check that Docker is up and running and Kubernetes is up and running. We already did this. Next, uh, we have to create this local the container registry. I already did, it, did this on my local machine. So it spins up a container registry, which we can then later on access to push our images to. The third step is to execute uh, a build and run script. I will open this for demonstration purposes. So we can copy this here. The first thing is we have to build our application with Maven. And once we build it, um, we have to build the Docker image here. This will take some time. Once this is ready, we can tag our image uh, according to our local container registry. So we will re-tag our image to have this name. Let's do this. This is quick. Once we've done this, we can now push it. So this push command will then push it to the container registry running locally on port 5000. So I already pushed it once. Um, if you do it for the first time, it uh, may take some minutes to push it to your local registry. And now as the image is in our local registry, we can um, apply our Kubernetes deployment to do this, execute kubectl apply and specify the file you want to use. This will now create the deployment as we specified and the service. Can now check what's um, going on inside our cluster and first have a look at the pods. So you will now see here that it created two pods and they are running and about to start. If you execute it, execute this command um, further, you will see once uh, the readiness path successfully turned HTTP code 200, this pod is up and running. And now our two pods are up and running and ready to reserve traffic. We can also have a look at the logs of one of the pods and see here the classic open liberty output for the server start. So everything here is up and running. Now also make sure um, that the service is in place. And here we'll see our node port services also in place and we are ready to access it. To now access it, we can um, curl for localhost the port we specified in our deployment YAML and the ChuxRS endpoint. And now you see here, uh, this returns the sample string, which is specified within our micro profile config and we are now ready to access our application, which is deployed to a local Kubernetes cluster. Stay tuned for further videos where I will demonstrate how to deploy it to Kubernetes clusters running in the cloud. Mm -hmm.